Just like George, good morning. Boy, where's the frame part? If I was just gravity fed, I wouldn't be under the pump. What's your hair doing? Okay. Yeah. What's your hair doing? Looks like a peacock. Introducing to you from us our, not ours, was ours, no longer ours, red spec R S15 2JZ Turbo 400 streetcar. So, was ours, it's a, it's a group effort, you know? I didn't pay for it, but yeah, originally the plan with this car, we got it resprayed in the red, and this was going to be Stewie's streetcar, basically was the concept for it, or a bit of a bit of a shop streetcar, if that makes sense, you know, a bit of a, just a, just a nice SRS built streetcar, basically, is what we were going for, or SRS touched streetcar and then uh, one of our good mates good customers uh, decided that he wanted it right or wrong and so he bought it and he's very persuasive so he now owns this the plates probably give it away to a lot of people but we'll leave it anonymous for the for the meantime I guess but originally this was on a platinum sport plug-and-play ECU and what we did was we went ahead and threw all that out and we've got the new Nexus R3 in here so Got a Nexus R3 with the universal wire in harness, so got that whenever that was, last week I think it was, and sort of spent the week wiring that in. And she's all sweet, everything's working. We've also got the IC7 dash, and we will be having the GPS speedo module once that turns up. So everything will work on the dash. I've got fuel level on the dash now, so the factory fuel level is working with the Haltec. Everything chassis wise is also still working. Um, a lot of the time when you go into like the Haltech stuff and start deleting factory clusters, you lose fuel level, you lose speedo, RPM, all that sort of stuff. Haltech makes it pretty easy, you can get all that stuff back. You go the sort of extra mile and you get those other few niceties. It just makes it feel like you're not necessarily driving a race car on the street anymore when you've got every single gauge and you know everything that's going on. I've got some nice bronze T37s on there very delicious. We've got the big Brembo brakes here and on the rear we've gone and we've upgraded to the Z33 or Z33 I think it is, the R chassis brakes so a little bit better of a rear brake and then they've got the internal handbrake as well so it's got MCA purple coilovers all through, Voodoo adjustable arms all through, all the stuff to make it drive and handle and stop. Inside's pretty much full stock interior or and I say pretty much it is full stock interior so we've got some just some nice OEM seats in there uh, I think they're actually out of a 32 or something. I'm not sure. S13. Oh, I couldn't. I'm not even going to lie to you. I don't know what they're out of. Nice. They're just some comfy seats. Don't know what they're out of. They're just comfy. They came from a stock something. They came from a stock something, yeah. It's actually got a big Stezza in it. It's got big sub in the back, twin amps. So even that's really nice. Interior looks immaculate from a sense of like, you can't really tell that it's going to rip your eyeballs out of your head until you're actually up it because the way that they've done the gear shifter in here, it kind of looks like a manual unless you know what you're talking about, unless it wouldn't, unless you know what you're looking at. But then they, you obviously grab it and click it down into gear and you'd be like, oh, it's not a manual. Wow, it's actually an automatic. As always, we've got the IC7 dash inside with the Mako 3D prints around their fitments. I haven't used anything else. I've only ever used the Mako stuff, but it always fits and it always looks really good. So there's no reason not to use them. We're gonna keep using them. If you're watching this, give us some free ones or don't, I don't care, we'll still pay for them. They're really nice. Nice little nardy. There's not much going on in the boot because there's a big ass sub in there, but there's still a few old gauges left in the dash where they've taken the, the vents out and put gauges in because it used to just have individual gauges for everything. And now obviously we've got the IC7 dash. We don't need any of that. So we've got to get all that out and get vents put back in it. But that's all sort of, you don't need that right now. You know, you can go and drive it. We've got a Garrett G42 
Turbo, plasma man on the intake side. We've got a Bosch drive-by-wire, so this was also a cable, so we've gone to drive-by-wire throttle now, so everything is electronically controlled. Tunability and the drivability on this thing is next level. Because this is drive-by-wire, we can actually put cruise control back on this if we really wanted to, which we may do that just to play around and have fun in the future. It'd be pretty cool to have cruise control back on your race car. Engine combo, it is a 2JZ GTE, non-VVTi, so it doesn't have the big ugly hump on the front. Stock pistons, spool rods, a factory oil pump, all that Toyota stuff, as much as I hate to say it is really good, a lot of the factory stuff is really good. And then we've got head studs, new gasket, and it's got valve springs and retainers and some cams up the top. Not exactly sure on the specs of the cams, I'm not gonna lie to you. They were in the engine when we got it, but they're not small and it's it breathes quite well. It's quite a, it's quite an efficient head. It's, it makes for a, a pretty responsive combo, especially behind the order. It has gone 900 horsepower on factory, essentially everything. Factory head bolts, head gasket, pistons, rods, all that. It has done it before. We weren't quite as keen on doing that again, so what we did, we took the rods out, spool rods into it, because they're the same gudgeon pin size and the same big end size, so you don't have to do any machining or anything like that to put the pistons, uh, to put the rods in, sorry, and it just makes for a little bit safer of an engine. Um, you can lean on it a bit more because the factory pistons and these are actually really good. They've got really good oil control. Forge rods, stock pistons, everything else in the bottom end is completely stock because you don't really need anything. No trigger kits, it's all got um, the factory cam and crank sensors. We've got R34, uh, R35 coils up the top, ID2000 injectors, got the Turbo 400 behind it. So this car is very fast. <laughs> And we did put this on the dyno. We spent a couple days on the dyno with it and we ended up rolling off the dyno at 803 horsepower at 32 PSI or 32, 33, I think the peak was. If this was a manual car, you're probably getting closer up to the 900 mark. The auto robs a lot of that power. I'm really happy with those numbers. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, George. I hate you. <laughs> we don't think that we're laboring the engine or anything like that. Like 32 pound does sound like a fair bit of boost for 800 horsepower, especially for a three liter. But when you think in terms of it's an automatic and that robs 20 to 30% of the power out of it, it's actually making actually make it sounds a bit wanky to say that but actually making closer to 900 so we're not worried about that have plans to crack the thousand horsepower mark with this thing but uh at the moment that converter is pretty much at its limits if we go any more any more boost from where we are at and we are very close to blowing through that so new converter uh we also want to put a trans brake into the gearbox so trans brake the box new converter and we want to crack the thousand horsepower with this thing and get closer into that 40 pound 42 pound um boost range so but for now 800 horsepower it's nice and nice and um nice and happy there sort of making the power reliably we did sort of five or six back-to-back -back pulls from 750 to 800 in that range and no issues no weird noises anything like that everything seems super happy there and the gearbox is loving it at that power too so we're not really concerned in pushing it any further at the moment we're going to give it to the customer and he's going to take it and thrash it and i'm sure he'll find any weak spots if there are any but for the meantime, it seems like it's really happy where it's sitting, so um, he can go and enjoy it and drive around on the street and um, get out and have some fun, and then when he wants to push it a bit further, we can get it back in and, and upgrade a few things. But for the meantime, 800 horsepower auto streetcar is, it's already ridiculous as it is, and with that 6,000 stall, it just comes on like a light switch. Anything, anything more than where we're at now is basically just for fun, essentially. We are gonna get some big rubber under it at some stage, probably go do some roll racing and stuff like that. Go and have some fun with it and really enjoy the car and sort of see what it can actually do. But for the meantime, it's all done. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. If you wanna do a, not very good at tours, but if you want some tours of some other cars, we can probably do that too. But I'm, well, if you want your car on this YouTube channel, book it in. You'll have to wait a few weeks to get a response from Stuart, even for a quote, four to six weeks. If for any reason, if somebody's messaged the page and you're like, geez, these guys don't respond, but they put out YouTube videos. It's not our job. It's not my job. It's not George's job. It's Stuart. Blame Stuart, all right? He'll get back to you. He's just busy. He's just a busy man. That's what he tells me. I don't know where he is. Must be busy somewhere. <laughs> not here. <laughs> not here. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be some more cool stuff coming up. My phone's ringing. Melbourne, Victoria. I'm not going to answer that. No, thank you.
I got it. <laughs> you know how to use it, don't you, but... Hey, don't blame me, it's in my tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Test drive it, yeah, I'll go for a test drive. Uh, I didn't, you sold it, champ. Yeah, champ. What I mean? I don't find everything there, it's Stuart's like, yeah, but I want to heat up my stuff as well. It's our 20! You'd have a pump for like your septic and stuff, eh? The septic? Yeah, just for your shed, a pump. You'd have to have a pump somewhere at home, wouldn't you? Water tank pump? No. No? So Actually you've never been under the pump? No. Yeah, I'm doing it. My, my, exactly water, what I'm my doing. water tank's just gravity. Is it? Yeah. See, that's sick. Imagine if like... I'm under the gravity. Right now, if I was just gravity fed, I wouldn't be under the pump. You know? Yeah. Instead, here we are, under the pump. I've got three points of contact at all times. What's going on there? Fuck's sake. $1,400 for an armchair. I'm not a moron. For some reason they get better the more the wetter they are. You like me wiping this ass, George? What? You like me wiping this ass? Yeah. Leave me alone, George. <laughs> I wish you could squish me. Squish anything, man.